to the book of Acts, amen, this is the prophecy that Peter said, this is that, that the prophet Joel prophesied against. Now, notice it's talking about the time and hour. It's really actually not the birthing of the church because the church was birthed when he called the 12. This is the empowerment of the church. When the church got the power. Am I talking? And some teach it's a birth or whatever, but I mean, but he, when he called the 12, baby, he birthed it. When he gave them a commission to go and tarry to wait on the power. Amen. So after he birthed it, it had to get the power. But well, that's another lesson, okay? But notice this right here. There's some signs in the last days. And one of the signs is going to be in the last days, God's going to move, and he's going to move to dreamers and visionaries. Mm -hmm. He's going to deal with dreams, and he's going to deal with vision. But notice who's going to prophesy. Notice who's going to see vision, and notice who's going to dream. And he said to the old man, dream. Bishop preach and teach in the last day, you need to be dreaming or having vision. You need to be doing one or the other. But notice this, who's going to dream? The old man's going to dream. That's prophetic. Because you consider somebody being old that done done or done ran or done did all they can do and can't do much. And so now they're sitting on the sideline dreaming. Mm -hmm. Dream is, 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 is you're dealing with illusions. You're dealing with fantasy and a state of unconsciousness, mental thought. Mm -hmm. So you got to be in the state of wondering when you dream. Am I talking to anybody? Vision, amen, divine inspiration that God going to give for future yes. thoughts or manifestation. Mm -hmm. But notice who he going to give the vision to. He's going to give the vision to the young man that can run. I'm already preaching, baby, because you got to understand that you're going to have to be able to do something with the vision. Notice here in Isaiah, I'm going to pick up some speed here, that had a dream of dream. The Bible said that a hungry man dreamed, and when he dreamed, his desires was filled There's about in his dream. The Bible said that in his dream, he dreamed about eating. Yeah. And while he was dreaming, his satisfaction, his desires was being met in the dream. But tell somebody he awakened. And when he awakened, he felt himself yet still empty because he realized that he was just dreaming. Well, I feel like preaching somebody, ask your neighbor, are you a dreamer or are you a visionary? The Bible says, amen, that a man was thirsty and in his dream. Hey, he dreamed that he was drinking. He dreamed that he was being filled. He dreamed that his desires were satisfied. Mm. Tell your neighbor you get in trouble in your dream. Because in your dream, your fantasy can come real. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody in your dream that your desires can be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Get no help up in here today. But the Bible said that as soon as he awakened, Tell somebody, you got to deal with reality, baby. Mm -hmm. And you got to realize, hey, man, you get hooked up with a dreamer. And all he's doing is dreaming. And baby, when he share his dreams with you, she share her dreams with you, they are large and they, they, they mind boggling. But tell somebody, it was just a dream. And don't you run off on a dream. And, and don't you run off and get into that. And all you had was a dream. Because the Bible say, amen, the hungry man, the thirsty man awakened from his dream. And he found out the things that he was dreaming about or the things that he was dreaming for. He didn't have them. 
Bump at your neighbor, tell your neighbor to wake up, baby. Huh? We got dreamers. Everybody talking about doing something they ain't doing nothing. Look at somebody dream. Everybody talking about God having everything and don't have nothing. Tell them dreamers. But I come to tell you, God said vision is going to come to the young man. He's going to have a vision, amen, which means, amen, what God been speaking to him in his subconscious mind, awake or sleep, tell somebody, it's going to be a vision that's going to have to come to pass. Tell somebody, amen, tarry for a little while, but it shall come to pass because you're not dealing with a dreamer. Bump your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're dealing with a visionary. That I'm going to bring my dreams to pass because they go beyond me just dreaming. God has rightly divine and spoken. Am I talking to somebody? I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you a sign, baby. You've been hooked up with dreamers. They told me the Humpty Dumpty was a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And they told me he sat on the wall. And while he was up there dreaming, tell your neighbor sleep. I wasn't there, but they told me he had a great father. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, baby, dreamers. Never come into reality, just dreaming. Dreaming for your desires. Don't have it in you to pursue or bring it to pass because you're just a dreamer. You're dreaming about a large house, you'll never have it because you're a dreamer. You're dreaming about a big car. You'll never drive it because you're just a dreamer. And if everything come to reality in your dreams. But, baby, you wake somebody, shake somebody, say, you got to wake up. And that's when the vision never take in, when he'll wake from the sleep and fall awake. He's going to manifest these things. Mm -hmm. That God has spoken to him. Notice in the last days, amen, Bible talking about the vision is yet but for a point of time. Write it on the wall that they, they that run can read it. And said it is but for a point of time. The Bible declared that it shall come to pass. Tell your neighbor, amen, I'm waiting on it to come to pass. I often said as Isaiah said, Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, haven't you not known, uh, uh, haven't you not heard uh, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, he's not a saint nor sleep, but the Bible said that he's going, uh, 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 the young man's will utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord. I come to tell you, God is going to give us provision. God done spoke this thing. And I tell you, it's going beyond the minds of a dreamer. Because all the dreamers is going to dream, I wish I had. The dreamer is going to say, I wish I had. I, I wish I can do. I, I wish I can touch. I, I wish I can drive. I, I wish I can go. That's just a dreamer, baby. Huh? And those dreams are for the young man, for the old man. Huh? But do I have any young men in the building? Huh? That know, that, that, amen, God is speaking to me as a visionary. Huh? God has given me the power to speak to those things that's not as though they be. Uh, look at somebody. We're about to speak this thing into existence. Uh, and what God has spoken to us is about to come to pass. Uh, and I come to tell you there's a devil trying to stop you. Uh, but I fire three folks and tell them he can't stop you. Uh, because what I got, uh, I wasn't sleep when I got it. Uh, I was full of work on the altar. Uh, and God uh, is speaking to me now uh, and telling me, amen, uh, I'm about to bring this thing to pass. Uh, I'm about to manifest uh, what I done spoke to you in the spirit. Tell three folks, that's a manifestation. God is about to manifest. And you got to know, are you in the company of a dreamer? Or are you in the company of a visionary? Because a dreamer, look at somebody and tell them, baby, a dreamer, just going to dream. Uh-huh. And it's good that you're dreaming. <laughs> But see, when you wake up out of your dream, tell somebody you just done dream. Huh? I don't care if it's a wet dream or a dry dream. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit of it. It's still a dream. Because you can get excited in a wet one, baby. I can I preach a little bit up in here. But when the dream is over, 
the assignment is over. Can I say it again? When the dream is over, the assignment is over. So what are you saying, Apollo? You just had a dream. Take your seat here. I'm about to, I'm not going to keep you long because I, I believe I'm speaking to some mission that, some visionaries in here. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm talking to some people that done took that steel knife. Uh-huh, that when you was catnapping. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, a little sleep, a little wake. Oh. <laughs> I tell them I was just kept napping. I wasn't full of sleep, and I wasn't full of awake. But I was just awake enough to know that this came from the Lord. And I come to tell you, he spoke it to me. And God said, it shall come to pass. And what God is doing now, he's making provision. He touching this one. He touching that one. He pulling down one and raising up another. Because God said, this vision shall come to pass. Don't tarry, but it shall come to pass. Take your seat here. I was amazed when I read that text. I'm not going to preach much. I think I preached this morning. How in his dream, the dream of the hungry man, ain't it something? See, notice, Coach Pastor, the hungry man dreamed about food. Hmm. The thirsty man dreamed about water. Mm. Notice when you deal with favor in the scripture. A lot of them say the favor is not fair. But you got to understand what favor is in scripture. And when you go to Luke, it teaches us what favor is. Because whatever your need is, and God grant your need, that's favor. Because Luke declared that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor, has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance unto the captive, to recover the sight unto the blind, to set the liberty to the bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's favor. Because to a blind man, sight is favor. And that's what it said in Luke. To a man that's sick, healing is favor. So notice, I, w I read that to show you, notice to a blind man, his desire is sight for us. Because what happened, co -pastor, we wondering. We, we, we idling. We're not putting in our mind, our spirit, what we need to put in there to keep us in the present with God. And we're sitting around daydreaming. We're sitting around sleep, which means idling. Uh -huh. And they told you about the out of mind devil workshop and all that kind of stuff and that's why we running off doing all these crazy things in the last day because instead of lifting our eyes unto the hill and the Bible declare that when I'm overwhelmed lead me to a rock but we ain't talking about when we overwhelmed we, we're not talking about God lead us to a rock so when we're trying to get caught up in stuff only thing you got right is a rock Oh, y'all got it, right? Yeah, he, they leading you to the wrong rock. Now, when you're over around, you go and find a rock. But it's not the one we're teaching and preaching about. David said, I lift my eyes unto the hill. Tell us my big rock. The problem that we have it, amen, we're sitting around dreamers. And watch your company. They everybody you sitting around in your little company. I don't care who you smoking with. I don't care who you drinking with. I don't care who you lying with. Who you doing what with? They all dreamers. You talk to them. Everything that got away from them. Or they talk about calling what they had. And ain't nobody speaking in the circle about what I'm about to get. Everything and what you got now is about to get away from you. And you ain't going to have no choice but to keep on hanging out with the dreamers. 
And I pray for you, church folk, been hanging around dreamers. They tell you everything that they attain by illusion and fantasy when they were asleep. Ain't that what the Bible says? That when he was hungry, he dreamed about bread. He dreamed about meat. He dreamed about getting this. But something happened. He woke up. The Bible said, Sister Carnese, when he woke up, those things that he had in his dream, he didn't have them. But watch it when you a dreamer and you just hang out with dreamers. But tell somebody, here come Sister Kelly the visionary. Here go one that the Bible say, amen. That it should come to pass in the last day, said God. I pull my spirit up on all flesh. That did not sanctify the nomination, they said all flesh. That means the Baptist, the Methodist, the Lutheran, all flesh. I'm going to pull my spirit up on all flesh. He said, My sons and daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. He asked the man of God, Could these bones live? And he said, man of God, prophesy to the bones. Uh, and I've come to tell y'all, we need to set up the prophesies too. Because all they talking about gloom and doom and all this stuff. But prophesy is to prophesy to the bones. You got to speak some life to the dead bones. Uh, you got to have a word. Uh, baby, I'm dead. I don't need a car. I'm dead. I don't need a house. I'm dead. I don't need a million dollars. I'm dead. Uh, the first thing you need to talk to me is about life. Uh, speak to me uh, about li- I feel like preaching up in here. High five somebody and tell them I come to prophesy. Get your dead tail up and live. Take your seat. That's why I got to talk to you like this because I come to prophesy. You got dead dreams. You got dead hope. You got dead everything dead. It takes somebody that's alive. It takes a visionary to come to you and tell you, amen. You know, the Bible declares what dead needs to be buried. I got to get a word to you before they bury you. I feel like telling you, you you, you like Lazarus, you're already smelling. You're already stinking. What they need to do is come and bury you. But I got to get to you before they bury you. 